Hi, as part of our Fear Free sessions, today we're going to discuss about learning, conditioning and teaching. Today, I'm going to explain and introduce three powerful ideas that can help you achieve a better outcome for your pet in its training. The first idea, classical conditioning. Classical conditioning is an association of a stimulus, something that the pet can sense or perceive. Often there will be uh, typically be neutral uh, with a so-called condition emotional response. Emotional responses are often involuntarily. We don't help how we feel, okay? And reflexive is on reflex. And they can result in changes in heart rate and respiration, such as a fear response. A learn, pleasant or unpleasant emotional response are associated with people, objects, and things in your pet's environment. Condition emotional response that are pleasant, happy and relaxed, or unpleasant, causing fear, anxiety and stress, emotional states which are involuntary and reflexive. Okay, we can't help it. The goal of classical conditioning is to associate pleasant emotions and prevent the association of unpleasant emotions causing fear, anxiety and stress with environmental stimuli. Food is often used to change a pet's unpleasant emotional response to a pleasant one. The essence of classical conditioning is association between a stimulus that was previously neutral, neither good or bad, and its continued association with either a good outcome or a bad one. Soon the stimulus alone will help the animal predict what's going to happen and begin a conditioned emotional response. For example, a cat learns that a cat basket means extra treats, resulting in positive conditioning emotional response, or in an alternate example, the same cat learns that a cat basket means a vet visit, resulting in a negative conditioned emotional response. Or your dog may associate you getting your keys with feeding leading to a positive conditioned emotional response or leaving the house without him leading to a negative conditioned emotional response. Your goal is to associate as many things possible with the good things and create happy emotional responses. So, you know, if you're getting your keys, make sure maybe you give your dog a treat. So then it goes here, okay, look, he's going out, but hey, I get a treat. So that could be good. The second concept which I'm going to uh, share is classical counter conditioning. Another trick to use is to change your pet's conditioned emotional response to a perceived stimulus from an unpleasant emotion that's causing fear, anxiety, and uh, stress to a pleasant emotion, happy and relaxed. It is known as classical counter conditioning. For example, a dog that has got negative conditioned emotional response to washing down after muddy walks. So food is paired with washing down after walks repeatedly. Over time, the negative conditioned emotional response causing fear, anxiety, and stress to washing down after walks is changed to a positive response because of the food. The third concept I'm going to introduce is desensitization. So desensitization is a process of reducing the sensitivity or reactivity towards stimuli through gradual controlled exposure. Exposure to evasive stimuli, usually fear-inducing, is introduced to the pet in a gradient fashion from a level that is unlikely to cause a negative um, conditioned emotional response and slowly progressing to more intensive exposure while still avoiding that level that will cause a negative conditioned emotional response, thereby preventing negative emotions and allowing the pet to overcome the fear. To begin, it's necessary to know the highest level of fear-inducing stimulus that a pet can tolerate without showing a negative uh, conditioned emotional response. An example for this would be desensitization using a loud noise CD for dogs that is uh, afraid of fireworks or the sound of fireworks or loud noises. It's like, uh, example, if there is a dog who is afraid of a um, the fireworks and every time they hear a loud noise, they get very, very stressed. Uh, there are CDs that you can get. You can play a very, very low volume of what it sounds like, but at a much lower volume 
until the dog get used to it and slowly increase it very very slowly and watch your pet okay if the dog is still okay continue with it and so over time you can increase the volume to as loud as it could be potentially so that your dog doesn't associate that with a bad response because they've been desensitized towards it by having a very very slow gradient so offering a fearful pet food is always a good idea because food can change the underlying emotional state from a negative emotion to a positive emotion. You should use toys and food before, during and after any situations that can potentially cause fear, anxiety, stress, whenever possible, in order to create a positive condition emotional response, happy and relaxed pet, and avoid a negative condition emotional response that can manifest you know, uh, by emotions caused by fear, anxiety and stress. For most pets, food and toys are generally more rewarding than petting. Feeding a fearful pet will not make it more fearful, but may cause a negative response to be changed to a positive response. Your voice may be coming to the pet in the moment. However, if you're anxious, your pet may become more anxious as well. When a calm voice is used in conjunction with a strong reinforcer like a reward such as food, it is more likely than a positive conditioned emotional response like a happy and relaxed pet will be created. There's been studies to show that the link between the pet carer's stress level is very, very closely related to the stress level of their pet. Okay, um, and uh, so if we are calm, our pets are calm. If we are stressed, our pets uh, will tend to get stressed, unfortunately. So that is something to bear in mind. You may have heard the saying, perception is reality. In many ways, this statement is true. For your patients, how they perceive the world is their reality. It is not how we perceive the world, it's how they perceive the world. So what we think may not be a threat, may be a threat to them. So this reality is what causes them to feel emotions and decide on what behaviors are appropriate for that particular situation. Because your pets have differences in their sensory systems from yours, they will naturally perceive the world differently from the way you do. Everything within your pet's world, including you, is part of their perceptions of the world. The way in which you talk and move will affect the perception and behavior towards you. Learning how your pets perceive the environment can help you to improve your interactions with them and create a better environment for them. If you do not understand how animals perceive their environment, it will be difficult to change their emotions and behavior related to their reactions to the environmental input. I hope you have found this useful. If you have not done so, subscribe below to our channel and uh, make sure you comment below on what you think about this and what tactics have you used to help your pet in the past. Thank you very much. This is Amity. I'll see you at the next live event.